the Wahhabi. Mm. Say, the, yeah. You see that there's fundamentally is corruptions of, of mm. faith and mm. uh, the form of uh, uh, heretical manifestations yeah. of the Hello, Orthodox. Um, thank you, sweetie. Uh, and from my yeah, perspective, so of course, the, the theological and the jurisprudential justifications or yes, that's it. It's that's available it. and it's, it's costing five pounds fifty. Oh, that's not bad. <laughs> not bad. That's a very good price. Yeah. So you can do what how, do, how what is the procedure in, in this? I can room? order a couple of them. So it's the book by Professor El Fado, uh, The Place of Tolerance in Islam. It's uh, 120 pages or something. Huh? Yeah, I, I, I want to, uh, we were talking about changing the assignment for this class. And, uh, I want to assign this book for all of you to read. And then we talk, we discuss the place of tolerance in Islam as a, as a more manageable assignment than some of the other books. <laughs> But apparently, uh, my 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 attempts are not imposing too too many obligations. The students have not drawn more numbers, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but shall I order I'm, some copies? I would like copy okay, because I haven't been able to find the books on this very easily. Okay. So if you can get one for me, I'll. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shall I get copies for everybody? Yeah. It's five and a half pounds. So. Uh, okay. Oh. That, and they're new. No, well, actually, the difference is one, one, what do you call that? Cent? One cent, yes. One cent. <laughs> Between new and used. And probably Amazon ships quicker than uh, these yeah. second-hand bookshops. Okay, I'll order them. And then, with little luck, we will have it at the end of the week, or otherwise it will be Monday. Okay, is that... So, uh, what is the final uh, number, uh, so to speak, in terms of register uh, people? Oh, registered people there were at a certain moment there were 17. Yeah, but is it like what we have now is it three? I mean, I think so. Well, Mariella will also come. Okay, okay. so that's four. Yeah, and I believe uh, the economics guy seems to have uh, not uh, interested. No, no. Yeah, so. so I think it's going to be four. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Good. I'll order these things, and then uh, tomorrow I will be able to attend an hour or so. Uh, today I have another job to do. Thanks. Well, well, I mean, at your at your have leisure, fun. as you said. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Well, what do you yeah. have? Okay. 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 Don't forget my the notes of me. Yes. So the thing about um, from from my perspective, the the, the jurisprudential and theological um, legitimation of these ritualistic cultures and so on, and what particularly interests me is why is it that the the the, the what we can call the, um, the the theological defense against the charge of being a corruption seems to crumble so quickly mm -hmm. before a puritanical onslaught. Mm -hmm. um, the Mawalid in Egypt is a perfect example because in you know, a lot of these Mawalid uh, have in, in Egypt for centuries, and well established, thousands of people belonging to them um, or that attend them. But it, 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 it was it's quite remarkable how, particularly in the 70s and 80s, 
beginning of the 70s and 80s, but uh, they, they were branded as a as a, 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 some type of corruption of orthodoxy. And uh, of course, Sufism in general was branded as corruption, but, but the, 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 the whole practice, the, pro the ritual performance itself was, uh, and of course the typical charge is, well, uh, show me where the companions of the Prophet perf did such a ritual performance, you know, in the text. And um, there are many responses to this, one could think, but the, 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 the um, ineffectiveness of the, uh, the, the sort of the, the the masters of these practices to respond at the theological and the has always been uh, fascinating. Yeah. Yes, that's a book. Okay, now, where did you get it? So uh, Herman Beck is having a cross <laughs> copy. Yeah. Now, yeah. Do you want your article to be copied and be available here? I, I, I would like you to read the whole. Yes, yes, text. of course, but yeah. uh, to begin with now, I can have it copied now. Oh, no. No. No, because I was going to talk about something else. Ah, okay, okay. Excellent. So I'll order it by uh, airmail. So uh, they say it should be here by Thursday. Okay, that's, that's fine. I mean, okay. that, that will be your, your sort of a weekend assignment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something fun to do with the weekend. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, I guess uh, maybe Marielle will come later. We'll yeah. see you. Well, uh, since we, we're such a tight group, uh, you know, it's, it, uh, I, I've. Yeah, we we talked about some of this yesterday, but it, it to me it's quite it's quite remarkable. And it, it, it's in many ways it's symptomatic of, of what I see often going on in the Muslim community. That uh, um, this visit, you know, my being here, uh, is paid for by the Dutch government. And it's paid for because the Dutch government will, uh, ha feels that it, it needs a bridge to the local Muslim community. And um, uh, what it believes is someone that will speak the theological and the jurisprudential language that they can associate with. Um, and, and I found it in several Western governments that has been uh, sort of this outreach effort. Uh, I've done, done it in England, I've done it in France, I've done it in, in, in the United States, of course, in many places and so on. Now, we, we can talk about a lot of contradictions in it, but, but at least the sort of the, the, the outreach, uh, the, the thought of outreach, of n not a reconciliation, but at least creating bridges for some form of communication. And I think the responses of the Muslim community to these various programs since 9-11 itself is worth study. Be, uh, I mean, and I might be completely wrong, so I'd be interested in what, you, what your impressions are. My impression is that uh, the, the response um, have, have been formalistic and, and, and nearly uh, taking the, 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 um, the form of a, a, a mechanical performance in, in the sense that if the contact comes, let's say, from the FBI or the Dutch government to the head of an Islamic center, right? And then you have the, the head of the Islamic center will go through certain uh, 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 um, a particular diplomatic etiquette, if you will, of, of formal meetings, of formal uh, words, uh, um, and so on. And even, uh, but the discussion never gets substantive. So in other words, there's no interest in, or not much interest in, um, 
in something that is not sponsored by the institutional leadership, either on the Muslim side or the uh, Dutch side. So I, I don't know if I'm getting that, uh, my idea across. I mean, I know that Nasr Rosaid had the same experience, and Tarek Ramadan uh, also is complained, I mean, in, in conversations, it's complained to me about the, the, the same thing, is that it, if there is the, 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 uh, the head of a Muslim organization co-sponsors an event, then people will come, they will politely listen, but they are they're engaging in performance to appear cooperative before the people, the, the non-Muslim side. But our experience has been is that there is not a, 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 a real converse, substantive conversation. It, uh, it never starts. So in, in, in Tarak al Ghafir is telling me that he feels that uh, in order to, in many places where he, he um, when um, heads of uh, Muslim organizations bring in the congregation to listen, but then in subsequent conversations he discovers that n people were not actually paying any attention to what he was saying substantively. They, 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 it, that was not part of the deal. It's sort of part of the deal was that they're just formalistically there. And um, I don't know, I mean, is this, is this a valid observation, or is this just a... No, I, I also find that kind of, that you told me, I mean, that's explanation. The, I, I took a, a class at Western Wisdom uh, uh, relating to the Muslim societies, and I found that they have many, many kind of problems in terms of, of the law. So. Uh, probably then uh, the Western government tried to solve the problem formally using using the law. They, they don't want to involve deeply about actually what is the Islam and, and, and the substance of Islam. They just want to, and of course after the 9-11 um, case, they, they sort of began freak out with that kind of about mo Muslim thing. Yeah. So that's why uh, to solve it, they want to make it as clear as possible, as soon as possible. They don't want to involve people about how the mechanism in, in, in the religion, in Islam itself. But then, what is, is the problem? What, is the problem the, 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 the mechanism followed by the sponsoring governments, the, the, the Dutch government, French government, Dutch government, the American government, and so on? Or is there a, a deeper cultural problem that Muslim immigrant societies in particular yeah, I experience? The second one, sir. The cultural well, why? I, I, I don't know. Like, in, in, in my opinion, just that uh, they still don't feel about the is, is Islam, Islamic, Islamic culture. Because then I also find out then if the immigrants come to uh, the Western countries, they they use the Islamic culture. They also demand for the Islamic law, for the marriage, and kind of that 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 sort of kind of this is not our culture. I mean, if we mm. engage with this kind of culture, possibly in the future it will change. I mean, slowly to the to the uh, Western. I mean, so we we lose our identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah lose the identity. So that's why. I mean, I because also because. Uh, the, the 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 demand of the Muslim societies in in Europe also with that kind of things uh, marriage that's very I mean essential about uh, how how to because Western law uh, do not recognize Islamic law marriage mm -hmm. that kind of mahar and kind of thing so right. that's why this kind of make a problem uh, I, I I think England they they become too aware of that and they. They make such a thing like a, they they recognize Sikh and Jewish marriage, but they not yet recognize Muslim marriage in using Islamic law. So, but nowadays they they kind to uh, change that, but it's still difficult to. 
Uh, you see, uh, this is um, it's, it's even difficult to do to pinpoint where to start because you know the, on the one hand you have the, this classic uh, well not classic but let's say um, well known well packaged argument that Samuel Huntington. Uh, that Samuel Huntington ca came up with uh, about okay, the clash of civilizations, uh, which is basically a reconstruction of the notion that East is East and West is West, and the two really can never uh, merge. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a repackaged argument, but it's a very old old argument, um, and and not really uh, original. It's it's just. Uh, the, the fact that it, it had gotten fallen out of fashion, you know, for before Samuel Huntington came up with clash civilizations, it was no longer fashionable to talk about a Western civilization. You know, I remember uh, when I first went to uh, the West, uh, first went to the United States, when I would say something like Western civilization, <laughs> my professors would always say, "What is the what is West?" Can you tell me what is the West? Where, is, where is the West? Okay, de define to me West. And the the, the sort of a little sort of a intellectual trick was played in the sense that, as a Muslim intellectual, by the time I became ready to abandon the idea of a Western civilizational unit, and by implication a Muslim civilization civilizational unit because also I would be told well, you know so much diversity how can you talk about a Muslim civilizational unit in any sense the leading intellectuals pulled the fast one as we say in the, in the United States in that you know surprise yeah. you know well <laughs> the rules of the game have changed and yeah, okay, so, uh, but this in itself raises so many interesting points because, okay, other than, than Samuel Huntington, Bernard Lewis, in, in his numerous uh, writings, one of his most famous ideas is, uh, if you look at his book, Islam in Europe, or the political language of Islam, is that, Muslims cannot, are incapable of surviving as a minority culture in a Western paradigm. And he argues that, uh, actually, and, and I've had a public debate with him that you might find on the web if you look hard enough uh, about this. Um, uh, 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 he uh, believes that the Muslim experience is very, very different from the Jewish experience. The Jewish experience, uh, the acclimated fully to the idea of living in um, uh, living in um, in um, what is the word I'm looking for in. Um, Uh, not just Muslim culture, but in 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 uh, in outside in, in, a, in a culture that in what? Sorry. No, no. The the margins, in the margins of the culture. M uh, margins or even uh, the word I'm looking for is uh, 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 like in, in in being a foreign uh, foreigner uh, in 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 in. Um, like a resident alien sort of. The resident alien. <laughs> There's a word. Di diaspora. Oh, oh yes. diaspora. <laughs> yes. That, that, you know, that the Jewish uh, theology, Jewish law, uh, fully acclimated the notion of diaspora and living in diaspora. And he argues that Muslim culture, because of the 
historical experience of Islam, it is impossible for Muslims to exist in a state of diaspora and remain Muslim. So, according to him, one of two possibilities. Either Muslims will Islamize their, their climate and um, then uh, control it, uh, control the public space, um, dominate it, uh, negotiate it in, in, in a fashion that ultimately it, 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 they, call, they, they control the gateway. Uh, or uh, they're doomed to destruction, not physically, but basically to dissipate uh, by either through full assimilation or migration, but in, because of the inherent contradictions, Bernard Lewis argues, then they will, they, they will not be able to preserve their Islamness in the same way that, for instance, the Jews of New York preserve their Jewishness in New York. Now, okay, so this is, this is some ideas, but there are some um, interesting sociological data that I think are, is I, 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 important for us to try to, to weave in in trying to analyze the arguments of Bernard Lewis or Samuel Huntington or even the more extreme versions like Daniel Pipes or Stephen Emerson and so on. One of the things that really strike me, and, and I found this uh, um, all over the West, in that the Muslim population does not seem, while well, well, the Muslim population is, is, is aware that the discourse about them, about their, their religion, about their identity, takes place in a media uh, that consists of an ac an academic institutions, uh, 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 consists of television stations, radio stations, um, uh, theater, art, and so on, but that it is, it takes place in the media that they are largely irrelevant for. In other words, they don't control it. it what, what, that, what is said about Islam in the United States what is said about Islam in Europe is not in any way, uh, the, the, the Muslim contribution is minimal. And it's minimal because, again, looking at the, the, the sort of facts, uh, uh, let's uh, consider how many of the books that speak not just to a Muslim ghetto, but to, to a public at large, are written by Muslims. How many Muslims go into scholarship on Islam? How many Muslims do doctorates in Islamic history or Islamic philosophy? Or, or, or I mean, most Muslims, uh, it remains they're encouraged to go into engineering or computer science to, you know, make money. Uh, if one of you know, with all due respect to both of you, you know, when you propose to to a woman, her family will say, ah, oh, you know, marry a banker, an engineer, a computer scientist. What are you going? Uh, many of these people doing uh, studying Islam in, in the West. Uh, you know, what, what type? It's true, right? It's, uh, and universally, uh, you know, if every, I, I, there's a reason I'm not married to an Egyptian. You know, this, it's, uh, it's, 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 there's no, uh, but. Uh, and uh, you, okay, so even at the level of bookstores, the people who go into bookstores, public bookstores, and buy books on Islam are not Muslim. Are, the vast majority are not Muslim. In, in one way to affect what the public discourses on your religion or on your culture is through your buying power. 
right? So someone, a Muslim Tariq Ramadan or Khaled Abul Fadl writes a, a text. And at the same time, Daniel Pipes writes a text, or Stephen Emerson writes a text. While I can trace the the the, a, 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 the the power of the market, and that's why I wish our economist was uh, was here uh, because econ economics is so important to so many things. While the, the 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 power of the market that goes into supporting the 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 production of a Daniel Pipes or a Bernard Lewis or uh, um, uh, or even a Samuel Huntington, you can you can you can trace it, you can track it. The other side, if we're, uh, you know, the, the Muslims might at most invite a Tariq Ramadan to, for a lecture. If they give a Tariq Ramadan an honorarium, it's sort of a miracle from Allah. Uh, you know, if they, put, if they spend money on it, in other words. But actually being engaged, feeling, feeling it's, a, it's a, a sense of ethical obligation that we have to get the text. We have to engage the text. And then you could multiply this. It's a, yeah, no, but, uh, yeah, I told you yesterday I do everything by books, you know, my, my world. So let's, if we translate this phenomenon a little bit wider, okay, this is a, a, a typical book on evil, okay? Theories of evil. I'm going to tell you something that you already know, all of you know. You look at a book like this and you find, without even uh, seeing it, if this book contains a contrib contribution by Muslim thinkers, from what age do you think these, the contribution of Muslim thinkers comes? From what, what era in history do you mean? What, what era, what decade? I mean, are they, do you think it's a modern contribution? It's a medieval contribution? It's I'm guessing very early medieval. Or early yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, I mean, and... As if nothing has happened since then. <coughs> Oops, oh, oh, I did something. <laughs> I'm sorry, but go ahead, second, one second. I, I, I forgot that I'm hooked up. So, I mean, I will, I will fix the situation. Okay. Uh, but, okay. If, in the business of, in, 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 if we pretend this room is full, <laughs> <laughs> and we pretend that it's full of Muslim students, and that all of these Muslim students are studying Islam in one sort of, something related to Islam, and we say, how important is the problem of evil in, in your existential being? They would have to say, very important, because any person that belongs to a religious paradigm must contend with what is evil, what is the nature of evil, uh, what does evil do, uh, how do you fight evil, so on and so forth. But as you guessed, the only Muslim name here is Ghazali. <laughs> okay, now, but since then, uh, a whole list of authors, uh, you know, but the, the uh, including the names that most of us have heard, for instance, Michael Walzer. Uh, very influential intellectual t today, especially in just war theory. Um, someone like Gene Hampton, uh, very influential uh, th uh, 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 theorist on notions of morality. Uh, um, Anscombe, uh, again, a very intellectual, ethical uh, theorist. Um, even uh, someone like the uh, Israeli writer Amaz Oz, uh, if you've never read his novels, that he showed, they're quite remarkable. Um, of course, uh, very well known by uh, names like Hannah Arendt, uh, 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 Rorty, uh, who's uh, 